Hi, I'm Will Deraset, hydraulic engineer and consultant to Federal Highway Administration. I have over 20 years experience in river engineering and transportation hydraulics. I also teach courses for the National Highway Institute. In this video, we are going to provide examples and information on performing a channel assessment. We will focus on field activities, but before we go, there are a few items to review in preparation. An office data review is a critical key to a productive site visit. It will inform and focus your field activities and give you an opportunity to gather needed field equipment and documentation forms. This video is part of a series and companion videos data mining and preparation for project field scoping and bridge hydraulic design field scoping cover these activities in detail. In addition, a detailed review of aerial photography and channel survey data will help identify channel stability trends you need to investigate further. Obtain and annotate a current aerial image of your site, identifying features and resources you need to document in the field, including the extents of the reach you need to review, the presence of infrastructure and utilities, private property and potential access issues, upstream and downstream hydraulic controls, critical habitat and wetlands, vegetative changes, and the presence of hydraulic countermeasures. Past changes to the site and indicators of channel responses can also be identified using historical aerial imagery. Obtain, overlay, and review these historical aerial images of the site. They will provide insight into changes in land use and developments in the reach, including changes in agricultural practices, development, gravel mining, flood, drought, fire, or other impacts. It, you can also identify infrastructure changes through time. You can also review the channel alignment and locations of river features, such as point bars and cut banks. It is particularly useful to outline the channel banks and significant features and overlay the traces to evaluate past channel instability trends. It can guide your field evaluation of channel features, such as this mid-channel bars evolution. Any available historical channel survey data can also provide insight into vertical stability trends. Resources that may provide vertical stability information include bridge inspection reports for nearby structures, USGS gauge records, reservoir sedimentation surveys, and Federal Emergency Management Agency Flood Insurance Study model cross-sections. During your desktop reconnaissance, you will have compiled a long list of observations, which should have generated an equally long list of questions. You should have identified areas that may pose a design or analysis challenge and recorded your assumptions about the site. Make a list of these assumptions, questions, and areas of concern you will want to take this list as well as annotated aerials and field reconnaissance forms to the field with you. Now it's time to grab our field equipment, our personal protective equipment, and head to the field. Today, we're here to evaluate the stream stability of this reach. We're going to be primarily looking for field indicators of processes that we have identified in as part of our office evaluation and we're going to be looking at our river reach upstream at our cr stream crossing and downstream for field indicators and also documenting any processes that we see happening here so right now before we get started i would like to point out that i you should be wearing proper protective equipment, personal protective equipment, and also that you are evaluating your location and situation for safety. With that, let's move into evaluating this stream a little bit. I'm standing here on river left. You are looking downstream on the river left, so as we measure river left and river right relative to floating downstream as if we were in a canoe. So here we are on river left, and that is river right. This particular stream is a single thread meandering stream. We are standing at the outside 
of one of the meander bends. Now, stepping back a little bit, why do we want to perform a stream stability analysis? Well, first off, we're interested in how the stream is going to interact with its sediment supply, its flow regime, and the existing infrastructure and environment around it. We want to be able to evaluate any potential impacts to our infrastructure and also be able to successfully design that infrastructure work in concert with this naturally dynamic system. So, we are out here today to review the findings of our office study for this review, also to document what we see and identify field indicators of stream, potential stream instability for further evaluation once we get back into the office. So here, we're, up, we're well upstream of our bridge. Our bridge is downstream and around the bend here. And we are going to be taking a look at the sediment characteristics of the stream. We want to look at the lateral stability of the stream and identify features that may indicate lateral instability. We also are going to evaluate vertical instability, where the stream tends to adjust its slope over time due to changes in its sediment supply and water supply, or changes in the downstream base level control. So here, we are going to take a look at this upstream meander bend. We are on the outside of a bend, and you will note a couple of things to note here are that the bank is relatively steep. This has also been reconstructed. This reach was subject to a major flood in 2013, and this entire up left overbank where we are standing was reconstructed to protect the infrastructure to the river left. You will notice that this is a relatively steep uniform slope bank and that the toe is protected with coarse angular rock riprap. Also notice that the, we, this, in this reach, this channel is developing a pool riffle sequence where we have a relatively steeper, coarser reach followed by a deeper, more slower pool region. Finally, we notice that on the inside of the bend, we have an actively developing point bar. So that is that region of gravel and cobble material on river right that we can observe. Note that there's no vegetation on it, on the active portion of that, but there is a, another section further back that is river right that has been vegetated and actually was historically dissected. So there is a secondary backflow channel river right there. All of this we identified as part of our office review. Okay, so we are looking, now looking upstream, still on the river left, looking upstream at our site. And what we want to look for are field indicators of stream instability, either lateral instability or vertical instability. For lateral instability, what we are primarily interested in are finding areas of oversteepened or sloughing banks, riprap revetment or other bank protection that has failed, the presence and expansion of unvegetated point bars, and then also when you look at a vegetated portion of the reach, such as you see on river right, just upstream of the point bar, you can see that we have exposed vegetation roots, leaning trees, and if you look closely further upstream, you'll notice that there are some large woody material that are present in the bed that will get entrained by higher flows. So all of these are indicators of lateral instability in this system. Also, we note that in seven years ago, this system experienced a major flood event. And as part of that, many banks significantly eroded as this stream 
eroded the outside of the bend and built a point bar, including this site. So you, you can see down in the bed, you can see the remnants of prior failed embankment protection. And also when they rebuilt this slope, they placed a tow riprap revetment on the outside of the bend to hold this bank in place to protect this, uh, the infrastructure here on the river left side. So while you were at this approximate upstream of the bridge, upstream of the region where the flow tends to contract, you also want to find a spot that will be representative and capture a bed sediment sample. Now, it would be really convenient if we could just go out and take a look at the material that's present on that point bar, but that has been subject to lower flow events that tend to entrain smaller materials. So that is actually coarser than the actual sediment supply coming in from upstream. Consequently, we're gonna have to dig and we'll do that at our approach section just upstream of the bridge. All right, so we've moved downstream just upstream of the bridge to the head of a riffle immediately upstream. So a couple of other lateral stability notes here. Notice that on the outside of the bend, we have a number of different generations of rock riprap that has been placed in order to stabilize the outside of this bend. This river is eroding its outside bank and they are preventing that. They are protecting the infrastructure at the top there Looks like there's a road, there's also a house, there may be septic systems. One other indicator of lateral instability that we do not see in this location is exposed utilities. So if it's very common in the vicinity of roadway embankments for utilities, water, sewer, gas, electric lines to be placed along those nice corridors and so it's one of the things we want to check for, both for vertical stability, which we'll talk about in a minute, and for lateral stability, is whether or not those features are exposed. We don't see any here. Now, again, we are on an unvegetated point bar, river left, at the head of a riffle. This is actually an excellent place for us to obtain representative bed material. So when, when we look at the bed, we can see that there's this coarsened surface layer that is formed at the top. This is not representative of the sediment supply. We want to capture the material that is representative. We need this material for a couple of reasons. One is if we perform a bridge scour or culvert scour evaluation, we are going to need to evaluate the contraction scour potential at that location. Two, if the bed contains significant quantities of coarse bed sediments, it may form what we call an armor layer, which is material that is too large this material may be too large for the, for the channel to mobilize during high flow events. That in turn may limit the degree to which ch vertical channel instability is exhibited in the reach. So we wanna capture two things here. One is the surface layer gradation and the other is a representative sample of the bed sediment supply. So to that end, we got to dig a, we get to dig through that coarse and surface layer. Typically you will dig through, take a look at your cobbles, find kind of the coarser materials that you are seeing present. And you want to be about three times that depth deep before you start taking a sample of the underlying bed material. Once you have that, you, you will see that the material underneath is significantly finer than this relatively coarse cobble boulder material. The other thing that you want to do is grab a large enough sample. There are references and your geotechnical colleagues can help you establish how, how large a bulk sample you will need to capture in order to capture the full range 
of the underlying bed sediment. Because this coarse surface material is very coarse, we don't want to bring home a dump truck full of, of coarse cobble material to capture. So we're going to use an alternate analysis known as a Wollman count in order to capture the gradation of the coarse surface layer. We need both of those information in order to evaluate in the office whether or not a coarse armor layer will form for this system. And we have moved downstream of our crossing of interest just upstream of a pedestrian bridge. We just have a few more things to take a look at. We've seen extensive evidence of lateral instability here. We also need to evaluate, as part of this field effort, the vertical stability of this system. Everywhere where we have observed the bank stability, wherever there is not bank protection, we see that there are steep, over steepened banks that are losing their toes, have leaning vegetation and, and exposed roots, and that results in large woody material falling into the river and being entrained. These are all evidence of additional lateral instability in this reach. Also, we need to consider our vertical stability. When we consider vertical stability, we, field indicators of that are going to include upstream and downstream base level controls, so things such as dams, bed, exposed bedrock layers, irrigation diversion structures, and, and or very, very coarse lag deposit materials. In this particular case, there is a diversion structure just downstream that is holding grade. And what we mean by that is if you have a channel and something is changed in its watershed, the, the discharge has increased or the sediment supply has been reduced, that channel is going to tend to rotate about that base level control to seek a new equilibrium slope as that channel gets flatter. Consequently, that base level control, maintaining that base level control is a critical key to limiting degradation. If you lose that base level control, you're going to tend to initiate another cycle of degradation. And that will tend to propagate from downstream to upstream over time. Another thing in this particular site that may limit that vertical degradation that degradation over time is the presence of very coarse material in the bed. We would need to evaluate this coarse surface layer to determine whether or not it is competent to form an armor layer, whether or not it is thick enough and coarse enough that the ordinary range of flows do not mobilize that armor layer and expose the finer materials underneath. Now, this particular site, we also notice a mid-channel bar. That mid-channel bar is coarse material. You notice that it, the upper edge of it is unvegetated, and that indicates that it may be growing through time. That would be another thing we'd want to evaluate as part of our office review with aerial photography. It's also very commonly observed upstream of diversion structures. So with that, this system has relatively limited vertical instability potential due to the presence of that base level control downstream and this coarse material here. Consequently, we're going to move for the remainder of our discussion to a site that has significant vertical stability issues. We have moved to another site in order to evaluate a site that does have significant vertical stability issues. Here we are, sta we are standing downstream of our crossing on river right, and you all are looking upstream towards the crossing. Now, this is a site that is subject to significant historical long-term degradation. We can observe that by taking a look at the floodplain here, the level of the floodplain. 
historically was pretty much where we're standing. And as we look, as we look here, we notice that there's an, a small inset floodplain, a, ver a large vertical scarp, and unstable bed and banks. Now, the reason we call this historical degradation is that this system, a couple of things to note, there's a sign that, that it experienced some degradation subsequent to the construction of this pipe <clears throat> because the pipe is perched above the base level. And also, you will notice that it is no longer connected to its floodplain. We call that a, uh, a degraded or an incised channel. Now, there's pretty good evidence that this was a historical thing and not actively degrading. And one of the things we can look at is the fact that it has formed an inset floodplain or terrace or is forming one in this relatively fine and cohesive material. As we look at the bank, we notice that the system has developed rel near vertical scarps on both sides of the bank. That is actively slumping over time. So when this, when the, under spring runoff conditions, this tends to slump and the system is migrating into this vertical scarp. Now that material, because it is fine grained and relatively cohesive, that's going to tend to slow the time scale of this system's response to this historical degradation. There's one other thing we really need to consider with this stream, given its history of degradation and lateral instability, and that's the presence of our structure itself. This structure provides a base level control for vertical stability of this stream upstream of the crossing itself. So if we are designing a replacement structure or doing a rehabilitation here, we would want to consider the impacts, the stability impacts of the replacement of that structure, because this thing is currently holding grade. With that, we want to organize and document our findings. Federal Highway's HEC 20 manual includes forms and other analysis tools that will assist you with that task. I'd like to thank you all for participating in our channel assessment video. And with that, I'd like to wrap it up. Thanks a lot.